And then we have the pink. This is a dusty rose. So same thing, you just go at the very tip. Look at that beautiful color. It is just stunning. The other day I went ahead and I ordered one more color from the Sennelier oil sticks on Jackson's. And I wish they had a bigger color palette, if that makes sense. I couldn't find anything else I liked. Or actually the ones that I really wanted, they are all out of stock at the minute. So I'll have to wait patiently. But this is such a fantastic tool. If you like that texture of an oil pastel, but you don't like the fact that they don't dry, these oil sticks are great because they give you, look at that, you could leave it like that and have the texture, the rough texture of the paper come through or you can work them in and blend the edges. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see a couple new colors. So for instance, this three colors are not repeated so far or maybe even this one and few colors are kind of like these. And these two are within the same group and obviously these and these. So I've got a few more colors coming. I thought to do this one, but no, I'll, I'll just leave this one. That was the cobalt, what was it? Cobalt green light, which is, where is it? It's this color here. So it would have been kind of similar to that group of colors, but we'll leave it for now. Uh, because I have four colors left here and enough for four swatches, it looks like. So there's some pinks. Should I do pink? I'll start with the yellows anyway. So there's yellow ochre. There's nothing settling there. They're completely transparent and I love it because it means I don't need to shake anything up. So I would choose these over the Dr. PH Martens any day because both the radiant and obviously the hydros they settle quite heavily and it takes forever to shake them up okay so here we go so that was yellow ochre Next one is Burn Sienna, so we've got Burn Sienna over there, so we're going to add to it. This is a beautiful, deep, deep color. So gorgeous. There we go. And then the pinks, or the reds. So I've got one here. Now pink obviously is here, so that will be the same color palette, even though you see the intensity is completely different. There you go. And then lastly, is this new color that I added recently. It's the brownish or reddish brown, sorry. How beautiful is this? Okay, so now we need to let them dry and then we'll come back and look at the colors and how we can group them to make it something pleasant because if you just take all of these favorite colors in one go and start creating it would be overwhelming you want to isolate the colors so that you have a pleasant and comforting <laughs> balanced color palette with maybe one or two popping colors which would offset each other so I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'll try to work quickly now because the lighting is starting to go down. The days already are quite short, so filming-wise it's 2.30 now and I have about half an hour max. Um, and then it starts to get a little bit too dark for natural light. Okay, so 
Um, it's a good idea to go through and just write down what is what because chances are if you have a lot of art supplies you might remember the color specifically but if you have similar colors you might just think oh was it for instance this one um, I have in let's see I also have the burnt sienna in Amsterdam and that's a little bit different so but it's quite similar in terms of color um, yeah, so it's good to kind of write it down so you know for sure that, you know, at one point if you look at this swatch sheet and you really like the color, you can easily get it. Okay, so I have to say with the liquid, Ecoline liquid colors, they haven't done it on other paper. They haven't even done it here, which is a thinner paper. Um, they haven't done it on any of my other sketchbooks including Strathmore Mixed Media and a couple others but this paper the B paper doesn't like them so I just thought I will warn you because here is what happened there is some bleeding as you can see it almost looks like feathering but on the like the inside not on on the top layer of the paper but either on the inside layers or on the back so you can see there is a bit of that bleeding through that happened so I wouldn't recommend using eco lines on this particular paper but I, like I said I haven't had any problem uh, with it any problems with it on the thicker papers um, sorry thinner papers this is a thicker paper compared to the others that I have so it might be something to do with sizing or something like that okay so back to what I was saying before now what I really like here is looking at things and trying to isolate color palettes so I think I'm trying to think where shall I do it I'll do it on this bit of paper um, sketchbook here so what I'm going to do now is isolate the first color group that I really fancy so I'm going to put it on top like that the first one is this one that really stood out to me and I'll just do it I'll do small swatches so I can put a few color palettes together so there's our oil pastel I have purchased oil pastel fixer from Sennelier and I have to say I haven't tried it yet um, so that's something I should really do and then I quite liked the Sennelier Antique White. There we go. Next to it, Mars Yellow. This Mars Yellow is beautiful. It's like my favorite color so far from all of them if I had to pick, but there are quite a few good ones here. And then I'd say this one is our contrasting color. I need very little of it because otherwise it'll just look black. And we want some of that indigo blue to come through around the edges as you can see. Okay, so that's a nice simple color palette here I feel like you could mix in a bit of that antique white with this color to bring a bit more creaminess and a bit of that indigo blue through and just in general looks good to me the other color palette that I really like uh, would be this color palette with the gold I do like that a lot so let me mix or, or swatch that out for you So that's the yellow ochre and then I'd say the dusty rose that's a pretty color now a bit of that gold right here yeah 
So let me just swatch this. So that's the gold. And then for a mellow color palette, I'd go for the, as they are swatched here together, I quite like that. So as you can see, there's not much color happening here, but we have the gold as an accent and a bit of pink, which is a bit of a color. So that's kind of my mellow um, color palette. If I wanted to add a popping color to it, I'd probably go uh, with this one or that one would work really well. Okay, next one. So here I quite like these three together but it doesn't have to be. We can also mix things. So it could be ecoline. Let's see. Let's mix mediums a little bit here. So I've got a bit of that liquid watercolor. Like that. And then a nice bit of antique white here again, just to have a lighter color. Like a light, a medium and a popping color, that sort of always is a good way of doing things, I find. So now I could add those two, they would work quite well together. So we've got this one here and this one here. So Burnt Sienna by Dallaroni System 3 and FW also by Dallaroni which is the artist grade acrylic ink. And then a bit of this gorgeousness. So that's a beautiful color palette right here. Um, let's try something with this popping pink. Either like that or like this. Let's try like that. So I'd go for two intense colors and to balance them I'll go for two lighter colors. So I'll start with the beige and then I'll go for this fuchsia by Ecoline And then Sanelier, no, I'll go for the darker first. So the Indigo Blue by Sanelier. Tiny little bit of it. Okay, there we go. And then the Antique White to balance the whole thing again. All right, so that's a nice color palette right there. And then what have we not used yet? I'm trying to think, so we've done all of these colors. We haven't used Dalaroni. We haven't used both of those. And some of these. So these work quite beautifully together as they are, but also with that green and this color. So let's try that color combination. So we need this one and this one. I'll start with a bit of this Dalaroni Rose Sienna and the Payne's Grey.
group. I have some red in my... The water is quite dirty at this point, so... This is very dark. You could use it as a black, but I'm just going to try and pick it up some. There we go. And then the green. Popping green over here. And then you can also, of course, reduce the colors. So you could reduce them to a three. So you could take out this one and just have basically these three colors instead. Oh no, I had some of the other color in there. That indigo blue. So I messed it up a little bit, it's fine. You can build them up. Okay, so there's another lovely color part, but like I said, I'm quite fancying it without the green as well. So you could do that. You could do it to any of those four colors. You could always take one out. You could take this one out. You could take this one out. Take this one out, that one. Or if you wanted to make it more intense, take the lighter color out and then you have more color. That makes sense. So again, take this one out here. That's a colorful palette. Take out this one. Take out one of the lighter colors over there, etc. So that's how you can work it. Let's do the final color palette. And I think I want to use one of these colors. Yes, yeah, so that kind of looks quite nice. Or I want to do this one. I think I'll go for the burnt sienna here. Go like that. Okay, so let me use these three to begin with, and then I'll see if I want to add a fourth color. So that was burnt sienna, wasn't it? So we'll add the burnt sienna. We'll add the antique white. And we'll add the indigo again. How beautiful do those three colors look together? Stunning. I want some more blue out. There you go. Um, as a third color, I mean, what would I want to add into this that would work nicely? It could be one of the ochres. So either that one or this one could do quite nicely. Changes the color pal palette totally. So I think actually. This pink would be quite good here. I mean, there's a number of colors that would work. Like, I think this one would be really beautiful. You can see it here. And or even a gold would work. This green could work really nicely as well. I feel like this green would work so nice. But then I have the same three, green, um, three colors here, which I don't want to repeat pink one probably would be nice. Yeah, I'll go with the pink. That's it, that works really pretty. Let me just use the clean finger here. That's it. Okay, so these are the color palettes. I would isolate them just to make it more clear and then we'll look at it again. Okay, so this is all done now and I hope it helped you to look at your favorite colors in a different way and you know sometimes to just make sure you're not overcrowding your art with maybe too many contrasting colors or too many popping colors because they cancel each other out and then you're sort of looking at something which has too much going on and you know sometimes it's it's better to have one or two popping colors or um, 
have a couple of medium colors and one or two lighter colors. So just like you saw here, it helps to break things down. And I think I'm not saying that you just use four colors, not at all. You can add more colors that are similar to that sort of color group, um, perhaps lighter or darker. So it could be, um, you know, like um, it could be a bunch of these. So again, if you're using one of those colors as your medium colors, go ahead and try maybe a few of those similar to yellow ochres, but they're all different in textures, different in tones. So for instance, you know, these one, two, three, four, five colors are from the same group. So you could use any of those and they wouldn't be clashing. They would be still part of one thing. Um, in fact, I would possibly even put this color into that group. Um, then in the darks, we have obviously those two colors um, and the popping color here as well. So these two are contrasting but popping. And then obviously we have a bunch here of very similar like burnt sienna, burnt sienna and like a reddish brown, which I kind of could put in the same group, although they're different. Or you could put them in the pink group. You could put these three in the same group, but they're obviously very on, on different scale. A pastel, a super bright and kind of a more muted, moody type of a pink, but they're all Three of them are pinks. So it depends how you want to break them down, but make sure you break them down. And that usually is what creates a nice kind of sophisticated contemporary color palette. And I feel that your art kind of, well, I will talk for myself. My art improves when I do that exercise, when I have mindfulness about picking colors. It, um, it does help a lot. So I hope that helps you. And the variety of colors you could could go for is endless because obviously you will have your favorite color palettes. It could be more oranges, more reds, more purples. I just went for my kind of um, favorite colors of the moment. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.